wait a second, what am I doing? I'm in Lightroom Mobile and I'm brushing. <laughs> it is here, it is finally here. The brush tool inside of Lightroom Mobile has shown up. Uh, hey guys, Matt Kluskowski here, and it is a glorious morning um, here in New York City on the 25th floor of the Doubletree Hotel. In fact, let's uh, let's here let's go to camera mode. There we go. You can actually see out there. I'm even going to demo a couple of new things inside the uh, the camera mode inside of Lightroom Mobile. But you can see there's a little straighten feature uh, inside of there now. So let's uh, let's get back over here to our photo. Um, I'm in New York. I'm at the uh, I'm at the mothership. B&H photo. I'm doing a little project with B&H and Adobe, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring you guys this uh, this quick video here because uh, it's July 18th and uh, and the, the update just came out this morning. Um, but it feels I, I've been beta testing and it feels like forever because I've wanted to share it. And here's why. This is this is probably the thing that I get asked the most is people would always find this if you look in the lower left hand corner, um, you'll see selective edits. And then we can tap on the little plus, and then you can see there's the, the radial filter and the graduated filter, that's the circle and the square. And the brush, the brush has not been there. And so people would find that and they'd be like, this is awesome, where's the brush? That was always the first question that people would get when, when they'd get open into those selective edits because I think we just we just expect the brush because the brush actually came first in Lightroom. So uh, the brush is now here and I'm gonna go ahead and tap on it. Um, there's a little three, uh, three dots over there. The bottom one, if you tap and hold on it, um, that's gonna be your flow and you can just move that up and down. Uh, the middle one is gonna be your feather so you can tap and hold and move that up and down. And then the top one is the size of your brush. And then you simply just go in there and brush. It is, uh, it is pressure sensitive. So if you look, like I'm just gonna tap very lightly in the lower corner. See that? So see how it, it's not laying down a lot. Now if I, if I tap and I press hard, look how dark it gets. So it actually is pressure sensitive uh, inside of there. So some pretty cool stuff as well. And then you'll see that there's a little erase uh, button up there. So if you needed to, you could come in here and uh, erase away any of those areas. And once you've, once you've basically laid down your overlay, you just go to one of the little icons at the bottom here. And uh, let's say we wanted to open up the exposure in that bottom area. So I was just tapping. Uh, just slide the exposure up. Pretty simple stuff there, okay? Um, and then from there, if you look up in the top right corner, there is three dots. If you tap on the three dots, it's gonna show you a couple more brush options. There's duplicate the brush, remove it, reset it, and uh, the one I use is uh, auto show the red overlay, which basically, if I'm brushing, it's gonna show the red overlay. And then when I'm done and I wanna do something, that overlay gets out of the way so it can actually see the adjustments that um, i about to actually working with there. So whether it's shadows or exposure or whatever it happens to be, okay? I uh, hit the little checkbox and that'll, uh, that'll commit your changes there. So let's get out of that one. The other thing, this is, it's, seriously, I'm, I'm telling you, these were the top two questions I would always get. Um, people would be using Lightroom Mobile and it's got so many of the same settings that your desktop has. In fact, almost all of the same settings as the desktop has, except sharpening. If you look in the bottom right corner, there is now detail. Now this used to be there for the radial and the grad filter, but it wasn't there just in general to sharpen your photo. So uh, apparently we were only supposed to sharpen parts of our photo. But if you go down here to the uh, bottom right corner, you can click on uh, detail and uh, you'll see that it's got sharpening and noise reduction in there as well, which is hugely welcomed inside of the workflow. All right, uh, let's get out of there and let's jump back over to our camera. A couple other features that are new, fun, and exciting are, uh, are gonna be in, the, this one's not gonna work inside of HDR mode, but it will work inside of automatic and professional. And that is, if you tap on the uh, the, the top three uh, little dots up there, uh, go to your grid, and oh, and then turn your grid off, and then go to the little triangle. Uh, this is shadow and highlight clipping. So uh, for here, let me get over here to the sun. So see that? So it's actually going to show you if it's being clipped, and then you can go into your exposure compensation and you can make some adjustments. And then as I was alluding to before, if you go to your little grid on the right hand side, there is a level, you can turn that on and you can see the level's been there. There you go. So you can see the level and you can't feel it, but it's got that, it's got that little pulse feedback on the iPhone. 
so that you know a little pulse like when you unlock your phone or you press your home button on some of the newer iPhones so it's got that feedback where once once you're on target you can actually feel it on the phone you don't just see it on the screen here so um, lastly la last but not least the iPad <laughs> The iPad has uh, has gotten a huge update. It is now, it now feels a lot more like a, an app that was designed for the iPad. I guess is the best way to say it. And and what I mean by that is I never really used it much. It it, it wasn't the same. It felt like a, an app that was ported over from the phone, and it really wasn't. It, it wasn't just a phone app on the iPad, but. It wasn't necessarily taking advantage of, I think, a lot of the space and the, the interface that we have on our iPad. Uh, the phone and the iPad should definitely be different. So it is now there. It, in fact, to me, it, it really works better in landscape or you know the, the horizontal mode because it actually feels like a workspace. It feels like an interface. Um, it looks great. It's got all the same tools. It's got the sharpening. It's got the, uh, if you look over, it's got the selective edits inside of there and the brush and all that fun stuff as well. So um, I haven't used the iPad much um, before this update and this update has actually got me feeling good about using Lightroom Mobile on the iPad. So uh, I, think, uh, I think I'm gonna be using it a lot more. I think a lot of people are gonna be using it a lot more because um, it actually really does feel like a good iPad interface now. So if you're a Lightroom Mobile user, uh, make sure also, I, guys, I have a free course on it. So I'm gonna put a link into, uh, into the description here. So it is free. You can go into the website and watch it uh, for absolutely no charge. So make sure you go in uh, and check that out. And thanks for joining me. Hope you guys, uh, hope you guys enjoy and have a great day.